Psalms chapter 7 verse 17, the word of God says, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord most high. Hallelujah. together and continue to praise Him. One more time as the church let's declare together. Second Chronicles chapter 25 Amaziah was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, yet not with a whole heart. And as soon as the royal power was firmly his, he killed his servants who had struck down the king his father. But he did not put their children to death, according to what is written in the law in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, Fathers shall not die because of their children, nor children die because of their fathers, but each one shall die for his own sin. Then Amaziah assembled the men of Judah and set them by fathers' houses under commanders of thousands and of hundreds for all Judah and Benjamin. He mustered those twenty years old and upward, and found that they were three hundred thousand choice men fit for war, able to handle spear and shield. He hired also 100,000 mighty men of valor from Israel for 100 talents of silver. But a man of God came to him and said, 
O king, do not let the army of Israel go with you, for the Lord is not with Israel, with all these Ephraimites. But go, act, be strong for the battle. Why should you suppose that God will cast you down before the enemy? For God has power to help or to cast down. And Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do about the hundred talents that I have given to the army of Israel? The man of God answered, The Lord is able to give you much more than this. Then Amaziah discharged the army that had come to him from Ephraim to go home again. And they became very angry with Judah and returned home in fierce anger. But Amaziah took courage and led out his people and went to the Valley of Salt and struck down ten thousand men of Seir. The men of Judah captured another ten thousand alive and took them to the top of a rock and threw them down from the top of the rock, and they were all dashed to pieces. But the men of the army whom Amaziah sent back, not letting them go with him to battle, raided the cities of Judah from Samaria to Beth Horon and struck down three thousand people in them and took much spoil. After Amaziah came from striking down the Edomites, he brought the gods of the men of Seir and set them up as his gods and worshipped them, making offerings to them. Therefore the Lord was angry with Amaziah and sent to him a prophet who said to him, Why have you sought the gods of a people who did not deliver their own people from your hand? But as he was speaking, the king said to him, Have we made you a royal counselor? Stop. Why should you be struck down? So the prophet stopped, but said, I know that God has determined to destroy you, because you have done this and have not listened to my counsel. Then Amaziah king of Judah took counsel and sent to Joash the son of Jehoahaz, son of Jehu king of Israel, saying, Come, let us look one another in the face. And Joash the king of Israel sent word to Amaziah king of Judah, A thistle on Lebanon sent to a cedar on Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son for a wife. And a wild beast of Lebanon passed by and trampled down the thistle. You say, See, I have struck down Edom, and your heart has lifted you up in boastfulness. But now stay at home. Why should you provoke trouble so that you fall, you and Judah with you? But Amaziah would not listen, for it was of God in order that he might give them into the hand of their enemies, because they had sought the gods of Edom. So Joash king of Israel went up, and he and Amaziah king of Judah faced one another in battle at Beth Shemesh, which belongs to Judah. And Judah was defeated by Israel, and every man fled to his home. And Joash king of Israel captured Amaziah king of Judah, the son of Joash, son of Ahaziah, at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem, and broke down the wall of Jerusalem for four hundred cubits, from the Ephraim gate to the corner gate. And he seized all the gold and silver and all the vessels that were found in the house of God in the care of Obed-Edom. He seized also the treasuries of the king's house, also hostages, and he returned to Samaria. Amaziah the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived fifteen years after the death of Joash the son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel. Now the rest of the deeds of Amaziah, from first to last, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? From the time when he turned away from the Lord, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But they sent after him to Lachish and put him to death there. And they brought him upon horses, and he was buried with his fathers in the city of David. Shalom. Open your hearts now and expect something from God that will transform your life. Father, we look to you that you will feed us with your word. May your word lead us, guide us, and guard our hearts in Jesus Christ. May you invoke the blessings of Psalms 133 over your people as they gather together in unity. Please command your blessings upon them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A man owned several acres of desert land. For a long time, he had tried to many ways to make the land to produce, but he failed. No orchards, no vegetation, no nursery. He finally offered the land up for sale. Someone who had been studying the area and eyeing on this piece of land bought it. The new owner thought himself lucky to have been able to buy up this land. 
In less than a year, this new owner became a multi-millionaire. He had struck oil, black gold. The first owner didn't know he had a rich inheritance in his land and didn't get to benefit from it. Disciples of Jesus Christ, you must know that you have an inheritance of spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Today's sermon is to draw lessons on the relationship between our inheritance of spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus and obedience to God. The text is on the kingship of Amaziah, king of Judah, in 2 Chronicles chapter 25. Title of my sermon, Living in Spiritual Blessings. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, Paul wrote, Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Every spiritual blessing that can be for us, God has given to us. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. But you must know that you have an inheritance of spiritual blessings as a believer in Christ. What kind of blessings are these? Like special relationship with God, special position in Christ, God's rescue for us, the salvation of our soul, reconciliation, righteousness, eternal life, grace, favor, protection, guidance, sonship. Why did God do that? Ephesians says because... Just because we are in Christ, we are so blessed. No other reason for God to bless us than that you are His child. God chose to bless you so that you can bless others. That's God's love. That's God's grace to you and I. Father of good things, and He loved the good gifts to His children. So you have an inheritance of spiritual blessings in Jesus Christ. Know that. But not only you know that, you must appropriate or you put to good use your spiritual blessings. A man had been looking for my dad for many years. After some years, this man's search bore fruit. He appeared at my dad's working place one day. We lived in Batupahat, but this man came looking for us from another town. So he found my father, and it was a pleasant surprise when he came. You see, this man's father had passed away, and this man's father left him some inheritance. One of the inheritance was a shop house in Sengarang. But this man could not sell this shop house because this shop house had a joint ownership over this property. And the other owner was my deceased grandfather. So in order to be able to transact on that property, he had to get the consent of my father, who is the heir to the inheritance passed down from my grandfather. So for so long, my dad didn't know that he had an inheritance. And because he did not know, he missed out on making good use of the opportunities that he could have had from owning that shop house. Well, the man told us that he couldn't do much, he couldn't sell, but only to um, let out and rent out the shop house. So the rentals he had been collecting, well, he came because he wanted to sell and asked for my father's consent so that we can sell it and share the property. Either my father take it up fully or he take it up fully. So not only must you have an, not only do you have an inheritance, you must appropriate or make good use of that spiritual blessings. For example, since God has given us relationship and redemption 
in Jesus Christ and join us to become children of God. We have free access into God's presence. We should make good use or take this uh, privilege seriously to relate with God in con constant fellowship and to grow in relationship with our Father. Since God has given us His Holy Spirit to guide and teach us, we also ought to be reading and studying God's Word and benefit from the Holy Spirit's enlightenment and teaching of God's Word. While inheritance is bestowed on the believers, the blessings are enjoyed through obedience. The blessings are enjoyed through obedience and faithfulness to God. The commands of God have been clear and specific to the children of Israel throughout the biblical history. Obey God, be faithful to Him, and you will enjoy His blessings. Disobey Him, be unfaithful to Him, and you will suffer the consequences of disobedience. This evening, we will look at the kingship of Amaziah, king of Judah, for our case study. We will see the relationship between obedience and enjoying spiritual blessings of God. The text is 2 Chronicles chapter 25. At 25 years old, Amaziah became king of Judah. He did what was right in God's eyes, and that is commendable. But the author who wrote this narrative mentioned, but not wholeheartedly. He did what was right, but not wholeheartedly. You see, he organized his army. He mustered more than 300,000 young men above 20 years old, ready for military service. But he also hired 100,000 fighting men from Israel for a sum of money. A man of God came to him to tell him that God did not want him to engage the men from Israel as the Lord was not with Israel. The favor of God was not with them. Now this indicates to us that God's favor, His favor will not be with His children who yoke themselves with people who incur God's displeasure on them. God's favor is upon you when you please God and obey Him. So considering not to engage the brothers from Israel, King Amaziah questioned the prophet of God about the hundred talents of silver that he had already paid them. You see, the king was more concerned about the money that he had paid than obeying God. The man of God told the king that God could give him more, much more than what he had paid if God wants to reward him. Let's stop here and let's question ourselves. What would you do in the shoes of the king? Would you still go ahead to engage the men from Israel? After all, money had been paid to them. Or would you incur losses in order to obey God? Will you incur losses so that you can be in the place of obedience? I can't forget this shameful incident in my life. I went to Singapore when I was a, quite a, a young teen. Went to Singapore and uh, you know that time Singapore's currency exchange to Malaysia was about almost equal or just a little bit more than Malaysia. Um, so I went to Singapore to, and I changed two tires, new tires. Not that Malaysia don't have good tires, or is the, the price is almost the same, it's, but it's just a thrill of going to Singapore and get something from Singapore, you know? So when you go to Singapore, you just want to buy something from there. So I went through the custom to go back to Singapore, uh, sorry, to Malaysia. At the custom, I think the officer was sharp and noted that I had bought a set of new tires, a pair of tires. So he asked me, do you have anything to declare? Well, 
I just said, no, I have nothing to declare. So he searched the car for other things and then he came back to me and said, do you have anything, anything to declare? Now, that should, that should wake me up and uh, be honest about it. But because, you know, it's a human heart. You, you make one mistake and then you want to cover with another mistake. So I told him, no, I don't have anything to declare. So he says, well, if you don't have, then I will bring you into the office and then we will do a check. When I was brought in, the highest officer there questioned me and gave me another chance. Do you have anything to declare? You see, when you are already in the pit, your pride, because of my pride, I didn't want to confess and be, be, uh, suffer the humiliation and, and uh, get out of the pit. Instead, I dig deeper to hide myself in. So the, more, the deeper I dig, the more I was in the pit. So I told, no. And then the, 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 the stinging thing came. It says, I will do a 100% check even on your parents who are in the car. So that moment, I don't want to put my parents to further shame. Uh, I confess that, yes, I bought the tires. So I, I was, thank God for his grace, I was not put to jail, not to face the court, but just to pay a fine. But it did teach me a bitter lesson, okay? a good lesson for me to learn about my faults and my weaknesses. The lesson number one is that your sins will find you out. Even if your sins don't find you out, know this, God will find us out. We can't hide. To cover our sin, number two, we will commit more sin. Number three, money must never stand in the way of making right decisions. And number four, the Lord's favor is priceless. It's priceless. I thank God, the grace of God did not uh, let my parents to uh, suffer more shame. So here, God's favor is upon you when you please God. And money should not stand in the way of obedience to God. Amaziah dismissed the troops from Israel. At last, he made the right decision. He went to war against the enemies and God blessed Judah. Judah won the battle. But God's blessings, sorry, God's blessings and favor usually follow us when we do what pleases God. Returning from the victory, now the king did a stupid thing. He brought back the gods of the enemies, of the people of Seir. He set them up as his own altars, uh, as his own gods and bowed to them at the altar and burned sacrifices to them. What a silly mistake this king had done. He just had a successful battle. Didn't he, didn't he think that God was the one who helped him in the battle? Did he not recognize God was the one who gave them the victory? How could he forget so quickly and be so vulnerable to sin? The question we ask ourselves How's my pride level after an achievement, after a successful attempt at doing something? How is my pride level? The Bible says pride goes before a fall. Usually after great victories, we are more susceptible to sin, right? It is then that we feel confident, self-sufficient, self-adequate. There's a saying that Reminds us, after the mountain peaks, they are the valleys. After the mountain peaks, be careful. We, will, we may fall into the valleys. That's what happened to King Amaziah after the victory. He fell from the mountain peak of success into the valley of pride and idolatry. The Lord's anger, in verse 15, burned against him and he sent a prophet to confront him. When the prophet was still questioning the king about his sin, you see the attitude of Amaziah? Amaziah stopped the prophet and threatened the prophet to strike down the prophet. 
the prophet stopped and replied that he knew God was determined to destroy the king because the king would not take his counsel. I guess the prophet knew that the fate of the king would come to a sad and fatal end soon. I think that time the prophet already knew God had already determined to withhold his blessings from the king. Peace family, our choices, our decisions in life can affect the blessings of our spiritual inheritance. Yes, God has bestowed on us every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. But we must tread carefully, make right choices, and make right decisions. And the right decision is to be faithful to God and to obey Him. After the prophet's confrontation, a tragic thing happened. King Amaziah sent a challenge to the king of Israel, King Jehoash. You see, success brings confidence. Amaziah was overconfident. And overconfidence is pride and arrogance. The king, King Amaziah, was not trusting in God now. Belittled and enraged, King Jehoash of Israel reacted. He attacked Judah. Judah suffered defeat. King Amaziah was captured. 600 feet long of the wall of Jerusalem was broken down. The temples, silver, gold, and articles were taken. So were the treasures in the palace of King Amaziah, and hostages were taken to Samaria. King Amaziah's life was spared by King Jehoash. Perhaps there's a grace. But in later years, the people conspired against King Amaziah in Jerusalem and they hunted him down and killed him. If we look at verse 27, chapter, 2 Chronicles chapter 25, verse 27, the, com the commentary of this person who wrote about, uh, the person who wrote this commented that from the time that Amaziah turned away from following the Lord. They conspired against him in Jerusalem and he fled to Lashish. From the time that Amaziah turned away from the Lord, he lost the favor of God. King Amaziah, Amaziah could have been a good king and enjoyed God's protection, favor and blessings for him and for Judah. But through his unfaithfulness to God, a tragic end came upon him and to his subjects. This account is a lesson for us. Trusting and obeying God is the key to enjoying the spiritual blessings of God bestowed on us in Christ Jesus. Trusting and obeying God is the key, my brothers and sisters. It is extremely dangerous to remain in a condition of half-hearted devotion. Today, let's determine in our hearts that we shall not be half-hearted in our devotion to God. King Amaziah did what was right, but his heart was half-hearted. Though we may do some good things like Amaziah, we may also waste our resources pursuing the favor of the world and make ourselves vulnerable to the wicked by making alliances with them. Amaziah tried to make an alliance with the 100,000 men from Israel that God had no pleasure on. We may adopt their corrupt practices. He brought back the idols worship them as his own gods, proudly embark on reckless endeavors. He challenged the king of Israel and alienated those 
around us. His own people conspired against him, searched him out, hunt him down, and killed him. You see, God covenanted himself to bless his people, the people of Israel, and to be their God and will watch over them and care for them. That's the promise of God. And this covenant extends to us too who are in Christ Jesus today. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, His divine power, God's divine power, has granted to us all, has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Nothing lacking for us to live a godly life and things that we need to pertain to this life. God, through His divine power, has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who has called us to His own glory and excellence. Praise the Lord. But the truth is, blessings are not just inherited by the people of God, but blessings are also dependent on the people's faithfulness to keep covenant with God. Deuteronomy chapter 28, the whole chapter that God speaks about the covenant for them, the blessings and the curses. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 2 says, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. They chase you and they overtake you to bless you more. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God, if you obey the voice of the Lord, your God. And what are these blessings? If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, after this verse, it says, there will be blessings. You know, I just want to do it in the, in the song that I knew. There will be blessings in the city, blessings in the country, plenty of children, and plenty to feed them. There will be plenty of sheep and cattle, plenty of fruit and bread. Blessing when you're coming in, blessing when you're going out. Yes, this is the blessings of God. How were some blessings lost in Bible account? And how some people obtain their blessings in the Bible. Let's look at how some blessings were lost through their bad choices and decisions. Cain's offering to God would not be rejected by God if Cain had offered it rightly. He would, have not, he would not have lost, I say it again, he would not have lost his place in the presence of God in the Garden of Eden if he had mustered over the sin that was crouching at the door of his heart for being angry with his brother, jealous of him, because God accepted his brother Abel's sacrifice, but not his. Esau, Esau was naturally bequeathed the firstborn blessing because he was born, born first, but he sold that birthright to satisfy his fleshly appetite. Saul and his dynasty would have had a long and successful kingship rule over Israel if Saul had not violated God's command. He disobeyed the Lord. Samson could have retired in comfort as a, an accomplished judge if he had taken seriously the sanctity of his life calling. If he had obeyed his godly mother's or parents' advice, and had not had his own ways. And as a result, he lost his power. Let's look at now some people who acquired blessings when in the first place, their blessings was not bestowed on them. Rahab. Rahab was a Gentile and a prostitute. An alien to the Israelites. No share in the covenant with God. But she acquired the blessings of the Israelites by trusting in their God, in the Israelites' God, 
and for helping to conceal the spies, the spies, by faith. By faith, she saw through her faith the true and living God that the Israelites served and she wanted to serve that God. She became an ancestor of Jesus Christ. Ruth, she's, she was a moi by moi by, but she became also, also became an ancestor of Jesus Christ. Why? For her faithfulness to Naomi and to Naomi's God. She was kind to the mother-in-law and says, I will follow you. I will not leave you. Your God will be my God. She had faith in Naomi's God. Esther brought God's salvation to the Jews by risking her life and stepping out to fulfill her purpose and destiny, even though it may cost her life. Loyalty and love for her people and her God led her into these blessings. Joseph allowed God to use him even in his state of misfortunes. And God reversed his fate, used him to save Israel, Egypt, and some other nations surrounding Egypt in the time of famine. Godliness, firm faith. Peter trusted in Jesus' faith in him even though he failed Jesus and went on to bless the church of God with his leadership, faithfulness to Jesus. Be encouraged to know, my brothers and sisters, that God not only blesses us with spiritual blessings, he also favors people who are righteous, like Lot, who walk and, and people who walk blameless like Noah. And people who trust in him like Abraham. Obedience and faithfulness to God is the key to living in your spiritual blessing. You want to enjoy the spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. There's no other way than obedience and faithfulness to God. If you live righteously and walk humbly before God, upholding justice, treating people fairly with love and mercy, the Lord will treat you favorably and will not withhold blessings from you. Let us not slacken in faithfulness to God. Let us not despise our spiritual blessings by taking it casually, like Esau. Esau despised his birthright. Today, you are rich in Christ. God has given you an inheritance of spiritual blessings. He says all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I pray that God will bless you and make you to be a blessing to many for walking obediently and faithfully. Let's pray. Father, I pray you grant us strength to walk obediently and pleasingly before you, wholeheartedly. We plead for your favor to allow your children to enjoy the fullness of the spiritual blessings you have given to us for our inheritance in Christ Jesus. Thank you for your such grace and love. Help us to appropriate the blessings of our spiritual inheritance to be blessed as well as to bless others, to be a blessing to the nations. Keep us safe, O oh dear Father, under your shadows, Almighty oh God. Release healing and strength to the feeble and the weak among us. Refresh the spiritually dry and wearied ones. Open a way for those who are seeking for a way. Lord, send your providence to those who are in need. May you grant them long and peaceful lives to enjoy your goodness and favor, O God. Keep this body of Christ in your love, in your peace and joy. In Jesus' worthy name, we plead. Amen. Believers in Jesus Christ, 
I would like to decree to you the commands and blessings of our Lord God as in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that we have just read. I decree to you the commands and blessings of our Lord God. Then it shall be, if you will listen to the voice of the Lord, faithful to obey all that He has commanded you, He will set you high above all other nations, and all of, of His blessings will overtake you. There will be blessings in the city. There will be blessings in the countryside. Plenty of children, plenty of descendants, and plenty to feed them. There will be plenty of sheep and cattle, plenty of fruit and bread. Blessings when you are coming in, blessings when you are going out. In Yeshua Mahashia's name, Amen. God bless you. Stay in the blessings of God. Shalom.